Well, good morning. Um, it is uh, September 11th, the anniversary of the vicious um, attack of the Muslims on the Twin Towers and on the United States uh, of America. Almost 3,000 were killed. I want you to contact your friends at this time. They can watch it live or or tell them about it later because I'm going to uh, say some things this morning on the anniversary, the 16th anniversary of this attack that in sometimes has been forgotten. Uh, I have to give a little history on uh, the Muslim religion and upon the attack and about where we are today. So uh, contact some others if you're... Uh, if you've, if you've got in on this, um, or if you can't contact them to do it live now, you can do that. But for later, uh, forward, I guess there's ways to forward to give it to others. Because I think the message of 9-11, and of course not only the message of, of what happened and what we have today in uh, regards to Muslim terrorism is important, but also the scripture that I'll be sharing from Second Corinthians chapter 1, starting with verse 3. And that is a wonderful scripture. It says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about our historic attack by the Muslims on September 9th, 2001. First of all, let me, let me say this, that the, uh, the prophet Muhammad, uh, who is the father and the one that is honored and worshiped and declared to be God by those Muslims that follow him today was a wicked man, evil man, a hater of Christians, a hater of anyone that wasn't a Muslim. Uh, his teachings uh, that he taught are recorded in the Quran uh, he did not write the Quran. He was an illiterate man. He he did not know how to write, and it was from word of mouth, uh, the teachings uh, that were penned down that weren't actually his writings. It is called a religion, but it is more a political system than it is a religion. Uh, the Those that practice uh, the Muslim faith practice uh, Sharia law. It is, as you would say, uh, their, their Bible. We have a Bible, the Word of God, that was settled forever in heaven. That's our authority for faith and practice. We, we find our, our Savior in the Bible, and we find uh, uh, all of our truths, and for faith and practice, we follow by the Bible. The Muslims follow the Quran that was written not by Muhammad but by followers of his down through the years. Now, the, the purpose of the Muslim religion or political system is the domination of the world and the annihilation of, of all other uh, religions and forms of government. They are, at this time, they have formed governments in various places in Europe, predominantly uh, uh, in England. Uh, they have it in France and uh, in Germany and other places where they practice open borders today. And their, their, uh, their goal is jihad, uh, the wiping out of all others. And they have special hate for three categories of people. First of all, the Jews. Uh, secondly, the Christians. And thirdly, the Americans, uh, top three. 
I'm in uh, two of those categories, actually in all three categories, because I'm an engrafted Jew. I've been grafted into the uh, uh, into the family. So uh, this vicious attack, which will continue to happen, uh, was by Muslims that want to conquer the world and uh, they feel they're in the, in the position of exercising a caliphate or taking over. And uh, even at this time, we, they've lost some ground. Uh, they're in the Middle East now. They're not real happy about that. But this thing that happened 16 years ago on uh, September 11th, 2001, uh, was part of this. Now, let me just say this today. It's worse today than it was then. Yes, we had our biggest loss then, but Muslim uh, religion and practicing Sharia law and following the Quran and this uh, caliphate that they have uh, declared against the world, actually, and they take it over one by one. We have a lot of places here in America. Dearborn, Michigan. I was from Detroit, right on the outskirts of, of Dearborn, by Joy Road and Telegraph and and uh, that it, where I lived, uh, just a couple blocks from uh, where I lived was Dearborn, Michigan, a stronghold of uh, of uh, the Muslims, and uh, they have, they have the mayor is uh, a Muslim, and and um, the commissioners and stuff, and they're trying to take over their Hamtramck, Michigan, there in the Detroit area. Also, by the way, uh, the Iman in Daytona Beach, for your information, that either to here, was sent here from Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, so as much as they want to tell you that that uh, the Muslim religion is a religion of, of uh, peace and unity and all that, that's a bunch of lies. They just tell you that until they get the upper hand like they have in Dearborn and like they have in London, England, the biggest mosque in the world there. And and open borders in Europe and terrorist attacks regularly. And there'll be more here too. So don't listen to the baloney. I, I was very disappointed today uh, with President Trump who campaigned uh, against, uh, he called it radical Muslim terrorism. Uh, he very timidly just said today, a terrorist attack. He um, he criticized Barack Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, very tied in with his Muslim religion, for the things that that he did uh, in just calling it terrorism and not acquaint, uh, teaming it up with the Muslim religion. And he was very critical of uh, Obama for that. He did the same thing today just talk, calling it terrorism. Evidently, uh, Washington is having its effect on him. Uh, and I, I voted for Trump, and I believe he's doing some good things, but evidently the, the swamp that he went in there to drain is affecting him with on the, with on the historic event of 16 years of 9-11. Uh, he calls it terrorism instead of indicating the Muslims with him. Shame on you. Uh, Donald Trump, I know he doesn't care what I say, but we ought to hold him to his promises and we ought to hold him to his commitments uh, that he made when he was elected president uh, of the United States. So uh, it's a wicked thing and they're going to try more and there'll be more 9-11s where they're mowing down people with trucks and cars now and and they're doing a lot of individual things, but we might have a major thing coming again. We don't know. But we do know that the followers of Muhammad and those that that uh, that practice uh, this religion, or let us call it a political system, want to take over the world, and they hate America, and they hate freedom, and they hate Christians, and they hate Jews, and let us not forget that. Now let's talk about these verses. Now you had them a little historic thing. And by the way, uh, if you do hear this, uh, hook it up to someone. Uh, send, tell someone about it. And go uh, uh, 
do that thing you do and uh, get your friends and shoot it, shoot it to them. Boom, boom, hit the right buttons. I don't know about that much. But here comes, uh, here comes a good part, the comfort in the midst of the storm. Verse 3, blessed be God. Oh, God de de demands the glory and the blessing. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. Oh, God is merciful. Uh, and the God of all comfort, comfort. I like, I like being comfortable. The God of all comfort. You know, we, we have uh, one person of the Godhead, our precious, blessed Holy Spirit, the third person of, of the Trinity. God, the third person, is called the Comforter. The Comforter has come. The Comforter has come. All oh, the Holy Ghost given. The Blessed Comforter. How wonderful it is. And it says here, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Verse 4, now look at here. And this is Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Who comforted us, you and I, who comforted us in all our tribulation, whether it's the memory, I, I remember uh, the day of 9-11. We're, we're thankful for the building we have now at 501 Ridgewood Avenue. We prayed for that uh, building for eight years, that we would have a, this wonderful structure and big building where, where we can further our work of rescue and, and have our programs and Salvation Center and, and all of that discipling of people and and having a, a next step program and all of that, we prayed for uh, for this building next door. We were in, we were at 425 Ridgewood, right in the next block in Little Billy. Now we're in a great big building because of prayer, answered prayer. But on 425, my 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 uh, daughter Jennifer, I was just about to preach. It was just before uh, 10 o'clock, as as I remember it, and she called me crying and she was hysterical, and she said, "Daddy, Daddy." They uh, they crashed a plane uh, uh, into the into the tower there in uh, uh, in New York City, and then another one crashed in. And oh, she was frantic, and and I tried to comfort her for a moment. I said, "Sweetheart, don't worry. Uh, God's in charge, and everything's okay." Uh, I wasn't alarmed. I was concerned, but I wasn't alarmed. I comforted her as good as I could. I got off the phone and I reported it to our little congregation there in our small building at 425 Ridgewood Avenue. And I said uh, that uh, there was an attack, uh, a terrorist attack, a Muslim terrorist attack, because I know that's that's who it is. Anyone that uh, doesn't call it Muslim, there's something wrong with them. It is, and, and uh, Bin Laden, and uh, who was uh, the... The one behind it all, uh, thank the Lord, we in America were able to root him out and, and put him away. And, and now his son wants to rise up. So his son's going to rise up and wants to follow in his daddy's footsteps and cause great destruction uh, to America, especially because America uh, sought out uh, uh, bin Laden and, and uh, did away with him like they should have. And it says here... Who comforted us in all our tribulations, whether it be a 9-11 thing or other terrorist attacks or, or cancer or difficulties in the family or divorce or some kind of heartache, tribulation. It could be anything. It could be a number of things. It could be a hundred things. But we all have tribulation, and the only way we can have true comfort in tribulation is through the best, blessed Holy Spirit. And the only way you can get the blessed Holy Spirit or have the blessed Holy Spirit is to be born again. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Oh, yes. And the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, and uh, when you do that, he, the blessed Holy Spirit, comes to live within you and will never leave you nor forsake you. And then as I have received that April 4th, 1969, I can be comforted and I can have the comfort of the Holy Scriptures and the Holy Spirit living within me. And then I can comfort you. 
and I can comfort my daughter Jennifer as I did on 9-11-2001 when she called me frantically terrorized because of the fact of this uh, that Muslim attack on New York. So, uh, who comforted uh, them which are in any trouble, and they're in a lot of trouble. The Bible, the Bible says this in Job. It says, man is born on the trouble as the sparks fly upward. Have you had some of them sparks? I have plenty, plenty. But I have plenty of comfort through the blessed Holy Spirit, and I want to see you to be comforted. And I want to comfort you this morning on this historic day, remembering the vicious Muslim attack on the Twin Towers. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So you see, comfort can only be given to others if we receive it ourselves. Have you ever been have you ever been born again? Do you have the Holy Ghost? You say, Well Pastor, uh I uh, I've been saved. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you've been saved. I've been saved April 4th, 1969. But you see, you can be saved, and once you are saved, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. God will never leave you nor forsake you. You have that comfort living in you. You're sealed by the Holy Ghost. And But the problem is with we as Christians, many times, Although we're saved, if you're not saved, you need to get saved today. But if we are saved, our problem is we have sin in our life and we're not comforted by God because God wants to comfort us, but he can't comfort us because we're in a backslidden condition and he can't even answer our prayers. He laughs at us like it tells us in Proverbs chapter 1. He says he's rebuked us and we wouldn't listen. Oh, how sad. How does God rebuke us? To the preaching of God's word like this preacher would preach or other preachers would preach or rebukes us if we'll read the Bible. Basically, it's from the Bible. Either a preacher preaches it or, or we read it or we hear it on Facebook or television or radio or recorded some kind of recorded system. But the blessed Holy Spirit uh, tries to teach us and lead us. He wants to comfort us, but if he, but if we won't yield, if we, if we fight the rebuke of God through the blessed Holy Spirit convicting us and trying to bring us to Him, and then we pray and oh, we we get ourselves in a mess because of rebellion and and the resistance we have to God and the Word of God. We say, oh God, help us and. As Proverbs 1 tells us in the last half of that chapter, it tells us that we ask for help. He won't, we won't listen to his rebuke, so he won't hear our prayers, and he laughs at us. I don't want God to laugh at me, because when God's laughing at me and won't help me, I don't have comfort. And when I don't have comfort, I'm in big trouble. I have comfort today. You know, I'm so comforted today on this day uh, of the 16th anniversary of the 9-11 Muslim uh, uh, attack uh, uh, trying to destroy America. And uh, why do I have comfort today? Because as far as I know in my heart right now, I'm right with God. First John 1 John 1.8 says, If we say that we have no sin, we lie, and the truth is not in us. And First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a wonderful thing. I've examined myself, as Psalm 139 tells us, 23 and 24. Uh, Lord, search my heart and try me, Lord. See if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. That's what I have to do, and that's what you have to do, because we cannot be comforted of God we cannot have the blessed comfort of God because the blessed Holy Spirit of God uh, cannot comfort us if we are in a backslidden condition. So it says that I'm comforted, which I am today. I, I, have, no, I have no fear of, uh, 
uh, the Muslim uh, religion and their wanting to take over the world and annihilate America and any other system of government or religion in the world. Uh, I don't have fear of that. I'm aware of it, uh, and yet I'm comforted, and I can comfort you. We're in the midst of a storm. There was a, a big hurricane in Texas, and now it is here in Florida. Yes, and uh, we've taken the precautions to be safe in it, but we don't have to fear in a hurricane. We don't have to uh, fear in a tornado. We don't have to fear in a Muslim attack to try to uh, kill Americans and, and destroy all forms of government and that jihad is hoped against us. This war has been raging and it will, it will never cease uh, from the followers of the wicked uh, Muhammad. So that's what, we, uh, that's what we have now, but we can have comfort. First of all, let me ask you this. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Are you saved? You cannot have true comfort. You might have some temporary relief or a good situation. You might get a few bucks in, or you might have conquered, you thought, conquered cancer, but God's the only one that can heal the disease. You might get some temporary victor victories, but in the midst of uh, Muslim attacks, in the midst of hurricanes, in the midst of cancer, in the midst of troubles, in the midst of people forsaking us and leaving us, we can have comfort because we have the comforter. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I've done that April 4th, 1969. Have you ever done it? If you are, you have the Holy Ghost living in with you, and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. If you don't, you don't have the Holy Spirit. You cannot be comforted. Now, you might be saved like I am, but if you're not right with God and you're backslidden and he's rebuked you and you won't listen, you're living in sin, That the sin you're thinking about right now, that's the sin I'm talking about, the sin of sins you're thinking. That's why you have no comfort now. That's why you can't sleep at night. That's why you're troubled. That's why the comforter can't help you because you have open rebellion against God and against the Bible and against the blessed Holy Spirit and he cannot abide with you and comfort you because if you walk in the flesh, you cannot have the fullness of the Spirit and the comfort of God. So Christian friend, are you... Holy Ghost comfortable today? Are you Holy Spirit comfortable? It's the only real comfort you can have. I am. I'm right with God. I'm right with God. Glory to God. Hope you are. If you're not, you can be. First John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why don't you that do that today, dear friend? Oh, yeah. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, shall ask what you will and it shall be done. That means abiding in Christ, walking in the truth, confessing your sins as a Christian, abiding in him. Then you can ask in prayer and you can have what you ask for. Isn't that wonderful? Once you get right with God today, Christian, it's that sin you're thinking about. What is it? I don't know. Your sin might not be my sin, and my sin might not be your sin, but we've all sinned, come short of even as Christians, yes. But what about you that aren't saved? You're not sure if you die tonight, you go to heaven. You need to be born again, because the Bible says you must be born again. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus... And believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why don't you do that today, dear friend out there? You're not sure you're saved. You've never been born again. Why don't you repent of your sins? Why don't you turn to Christ? And why don't you be saved today? I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. Wouldn't you pray it with me if you don't know you're saved? Everybody, everybody must have a getting saved day. Everybody must be born again. This is the prayer. 
pray it. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose to the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Did you do that? Let me know. Send me a comment. Send me a response that you've been saved. And if you've been living in sin and you're Christian, you haven't had comfort, and you claim 1 John 1, 9 as a Christian and confessed your sin and got right, then you could have the comfort. I have that comfort today. I'm glad I could share it with you that you could be saved or you could come back from being a backslider. God bless you. Share this with somebody, please. And let's get it around because it's a good message on the truth of 9-11. And it's also a good message on salvation for those that aren't saved. God bless you. Give me a response. Share it with others. We'll talk to you tomorrow.